towards Barry. IFB. Southern right Israel. now we are in Kibbutz. I got him now. I got you now. Harris? Mm -hmm. Got you. Okay, uh, guys, I, I need to warn our viewers, what we're about to show you is the aftermath of the massacre against Israelis on Saturday morning. We are in Kibbutz Be'eri that sits just over the border from Gaza on Saturday morning. Hamas militants stormed this area. I need to warn you before I show you the scene here, it is very graphic. So if you're at home with children, uh, please do not have them look at this. But this is what Israel is facing right now. And it's very important that we show you this. I'm going to have my cameraman come in here. You can see the floors are stained with blood. It was Saturday morning around 7 a.m. When militants stormed this village, you can see the weapons they brought with them, extra ammunition, bullet holes in the side of the house and knives on the floor. This was the scene. This kibbutz, this community over the border with Gaza is littered with bodies. It is completely destroyed. It looks like some of the buildings were hit with RPGs, explosives, and beds covered in blood, the kitchen floor covered in blood. This is inside a home that was stormed by this military law order. It is hell on earth, a poor house. And just we have seen sitting on tables and life on a Saturday morning. Uh, walk outside. Uh, can you hear us now? Trey, uh, what you may have to do, this is Harris. Trey, you are doing an amazing job. We are in tears here. I mean, this is really hard to watch. If you can make your way back out to the front door so we can get a signal on you, we want to be able to hear you tell us what you're seeing. We can show the video, but as you get deeper into that structure uh, where those people were no doubt trying to get to a safe place, we can't hear you. Can you hear me? I, I can hear you now. Can you hear me, Harris? Yep, we got you. Okay, so I, I just want to describe what it's like in Kibbutz Be'eri. We arrived here with the Army a few hours ago, and on the road in, we went past the area where that music festival was, where 260 innocent Israelis were mowed down. You could smell the stench of death in the air on the drive, and as we got closer to this kibbutz, where so many families were slaughtered in their homes, it became obvious that we didn't even have a full grasp of what took place here. When you turn into the kibbutz, the army has taken back over control of this entire area. There are no longer militants here, but they say just 12 hours ago, they were in gun battles in this area. There is a large pile of bodies stacked up outside of the kibbutz. These are the bodies of militants that they've collected. Around the back of this house, down the street a little bit, we saw about eight bodies in body bags of the local residents who were here. Some may be militants. They still have to work to identify the bodies. Some are hard to identify. I want to just tell you what the commanding officer told me when we got here. He saw many of the families that were slaughtered in their beds and in their bomb shelters after Hamas militants broke through the door. He told us uh, that there were people who were decapitated here, um, people with their hands tied behind their backs and shot, executed. And you saw from inside that house, it is the most horrific thing I have ever seen. It is a, a community where there are, are breakfast plates out with food still on them, on dining room tables. There are refrigerators like you would see anywhere in the world with pictures of little kids playing sports. There are bicycles and still ceiling fans going inside the house and there are beds soaked with blood the floor of that kitchen as you saw and there are weapons laying everywhere from those militants you can see some of their vehicles just outside it is a house of horror behind me and the entire neighborhood looks like this to give you a quick number about how many people live here there are a thousand residents that were living in kibbutz Berry before this horrific terror attack on saturday morning more than 100 of them were killed. 
uh, many children among the dead, and their pictures are still on the refrigerator in the in the house. Uh, Trey, a couple of things. I mean, just there are no words, really. But when you say that 12 hours ago they were still fighting the militants, they haven't gotten very far in. I mean, this is going to be hell, as General Jack Keane and Congressman Dan Crenshaw have said. I mean, if it took them that long to get to Kibbutz Bari, which is not far from crossing over into Hamas territory, how long will it take for them to penetrate Gaza City and get these guys out? I mean, it was only 12 hours ago they were killing militants right where you're standing. And look, like I said, the roads along here are lined with the bodies of militants. We see them in the cars. Last night we came upon a scene and they had gear with them looking like they were going to stay for a long time. They were holding mm -hmm. territory in southern Israel. And the, the piles of bodies outside of this kibbutz of militants, there were so many. They've already collected more than 1,500 dead Hamas and Islamic Jihad members who stormed into Israel. They have weapons. They have people. And they have a belief that they're doing the right thing. And that is the hardest, the hardest thing to understand about all of this. They came into this community and they slaughtered children. There are bodies of civilians just off in the distance here that we saw. Um, I'm going to toss it back to you, though. We do need to get out of here. It okay. is dark. Uh, it's not the best place to be after sure. dark. But I wanted to make sure you could see the hell on earth here. No, and we're grateful for, for all of this in your reporting. And when you tell me 12 hours, I immediately start to worry, well, did you get everybody? Um, so, no, I know you need to go take cover. Thank you, and be safe. God bless you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.